Hey guys, what's going on? Arkel here. Uh, so today, unfortunately, I'm not going to be rolling uh, for the new hero, Heartbreaker. She does look really good though. Um, I don't really want to spend without a spend event. Uh, uh, and I still have way too many resources to put into Demogorgon. And also, Michael is still lagging behind. I, I do think that she's better than Michael, so if I did get her, she would probably take priority. But anyway, instead, uh, today I'm going to be following up on the randomness video. Uh, you guys had good questions on there that weren't addressed when I was talking about uh, the seeding and how we can't manipulate the randomness in any way. So instead, now I'm going to talk about how these random numbers are used in different situations. So the first thing that we uh, that I, I should mention is that random numbers don't usually do much without giving them a context. So uh, you can't just have a number and not take decisions on it. So usually there are two parts. Uh, random number generation is one but then you need an algorithm to actually decide what to do with the resulting number. So the algorithm is responsible for determining the weights, if any, or any other sort of behavior that should come out uh, from this random number or this range of random numbers. So the word algorithm might sound like a big word, but in reality, all it is is it's a set of condition, uh, a set of conditions that determines a behavior, and that's all. So just to help you visualize, um, I'll give you a, a small example here in real life. So let's go the complex route here so that you can see everything that goes on. So let's say that your action is to turn on a lamp. Uh, an algorithm might go like this. So the first question is: Is it plugged in? If it's not plugged in, then you leave it turned off. If it is plugged in, then you check, is, is there a light bulb in it? And if there if there is none, then you leave it turned off still. Uh, if there is a light bulb that uh, that is there, then you check, is it still functional? And if it's not, then you, you, know, you leave the lamp turned off. But if all, all those conditions are uh, true, then you would turn the light on. And that's, uh, that's what an algorithm actually is. It's just a set of these conditions and it's gonna determine a behavior in the end. So let's do this one again, but in a very simplified version. So you check if the lamp is plugged in. When you try to turn it on, just check if it's plugged in and it has a light bulb and the bulb is functional. And if all those are true, then you turn it on. Otherwise you just do nothing. So that's a simplified version of this algorithm. So, um, randomness is used almost everywhere in a game. I mean, you look at anything and there is some sort of randomness. Without that, you would have a, you would have a very, very static game where they, it would look like there's no life in it. Uh, so, I'm going to give you three examples here. There are many, many, many. I'll name some a little bit later. Uh, but three examples that I'll go into a little bit more in depth so that you can see how these random numbers are actually being used. So, the first one that I want to talk about is think about the movement of heroes and troops and bosses around their hero base or camp. So, if you think about this, they usually walk around a little bit, then wait a little bit. So, if you would want to reproduce uh, this behavior, which a random number generator is actually driving all this behavior. So you could do it with three random numbers. The first one you could do 0 to 359 for all the degrees in a circle. Uh, so if you if 0 would start from north and then any other number would be the angle that you want to go towards. Uh, you can have another one which would be let's say 1 to 20 and that would be the distance in units from the center of that base. So for uh, one, uh, then also you could have a third one, which is 
let's say 1000 to 5000 and that would be the amount of milliseconds to wait when you get to your destination to repeat this all again and do the next movement. So with those three you could recreate the behavior that you see in Castle Clash when the hero is walking around its base. Same thing for troops and same thing for bosses and dungeons around their base and things like that. So uh, with these what you could do is you could uh, be able to calculate the point from the center of the base. So you would calculate the angle and then the units from that center and it could give you some XY coordinates on the map and then you would simply move the hero there and once he's there you would wait the amount of seconds that was also randomized so that it's not always the exact same amount of time it gives a little bit more life a little bit more depth and uh, yeah then you would recreate the exact same behavior that you see uh, with these heroes around their bases. So that was the first example. Another one which you might care a lot more about is something like talent rolls. So with talent rolls you could do it with two random numbers. It could be as complex or as simple as you want it to be but uh, I'll just go with two random numbers for this one. So let's say that the first one that I roll, uh, that, that I generate for a random number, let's say that it's the range is 1 to 100. 1 to 100, that would be for the talent itself. So we could distribute in the algorithm that follows. Uh, we could say that common talents are going to be 70% of the time. Rare talents are going to be 20% of the time. And mystic talents are going to be 10% of the time. So once you get that, uh, then you, you could get, uh, you know, 1 to whatever... Uh, talent let's say that there are five let's say that there are six common talents so then you could roll one to six after that for a random number and it would give you the exact talent that will show up so the other thing that you could do uh, well the second random number that you would have for this is obviously the talent level so you could also roll one to 100 for this and distribute the weights accordingly so uh, this could be something like for uh, level 1 would be 40% of the time, level 2 would be 25% of the time, level 3 would be 20% of the time, 4 would be 10% of the time, and 5 would be 5% of the time. So with this, uh, it's less likely to get a mystic talent, and it's also increasingly difficult to get a level 5, which represents pretty much what you see in Castle Clash. So when you do uh, the 10% uh, chance of getting a mystic talent coupled with the 5% uh, chance of getting a level 5, then it pretty much represents how hard it is to actually get a good 5 talent, where you can spend 40, 60,000 uh, uh, gems to roll on talents and not really get one or just get one. It, it's really difficult. So that would be an example for the talent roles themselves. So now we can talk also about the hero roles. So hero roles would be a little bit similar to the talent roles. So you could do it also with two random numbers, but again, it could be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Uh, so for, for that, you could do 1 to 100 for the hero type. So let's say that 5% of the time it's going to be a legend and 10% of the time it's going to be a green. That would leave 85% of the time for a blue, which again is pretty much representative of what we see in Castle Clash. Mostly blues, we see a bit more greens than we see legends, and legends are pretty rare. So 1 in 20 sounds about right to me. So that would be 5%. So you've got uh, also a second random number that could determine the hero itself in that category. So let's say that you do roll a legend uh, in that 5% on the first random number. Then the second random number could randomize uh, the hero itself that's going to show up that is a legend. So 
It could be something like Paladin, Succubus and Ninja have a 10% chance because we do see them a lot more than others and it could become increasingly difficult as the heroes are newer. So it could be something like Paladin, Succubus, Ninja at 10%, then it could be DK, Candy Cane, Triantar, uh, things like that at 5% and it could get uh, harder and harder up until you get to the new heroes which would be only you know, one to three percent or something like that. So that would be an example of the hero rolls. So like I said before, this randomness is used everywhere. Uh, some of the other examples that I can give you is opening, uh, you know, chests and eggs and other types of events. Uh, mob spawns in Lost Realm, so what tile, what stamina cost, what enemy group, uh, there's also in Here Be Demon, uh, well in Lost Realm there's the Here Be Demon, which one is going to spawn, uh, the chest, the merchant, uh, and that's after every uh, action that you finish. So there's also Lost Battlefield, the opponents that you get when you refresh the line. Uh, there's uh, the Archdemon types after Crisis. I mean, IgG is not going in and selecting by themselves. This is all random. Uh, there's the HBM and Trial spawn locations. So the way that uh, that the all the heroes or all the mobs or the groups of mobs spawn around the map when you're doing uh, HBM or Trials. Uh, there could also be some weights in there. So. Those weights could include if there's more walls towards a certain angle, uh, it could be biased towards that angle to increase the difficulty so you would have more back spawns more frequently and things like that. Uh, I don't think that's actually going on, we just remember the ones that, uh, you know, that are really bad for us, we remember them more. Uh, so, but there's also the pet procs. Uh, there's the arena defense positions because the way that you put your heroes on defense are kind of randomized when somebody is actually attacking you. There's also normal paid raids when uh, within a certain set of rules like uh, you know the, op the opponents can't be under a shield and things like that but for the ones who are accessible that's all going to be randomized. Uh, there's also the shard drops when you're sweeping which seem to be around 25%. And there's so much more, it's really all over the place. So, in essence, the random number is really only the starting point towards a certain outcome. So, the algorithm is going to be the one that determines the behavior to come from that number. So, this, uh, you know, could come in the form uh, uh, such as making succubus more likely on hero rolls, such as making, uh, you know, common talents more common, level 1 talents more common, um, you know, things like that during talent rolls. So anyway, let me know in the comments if you have more questions. Uh, I will answer everything that I can, and if some good questions keep coming up, then I'll keep answering and I will continue this series. Uh, it seems to be uh, pretty well received, people seem to be interested in knowing uh, what happens behind the scenes, so I'm really glad that I can help. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty much it for this video in regards to randomness itself. So one other thing that I'm gonna mention is that the giveaway winner is most likely going to be announced in tomorrow's video. Uh, it just depends what my plans are going to be this weekend, but uh, most likely than not, it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, I'll try to get in touch with Avatrex and, I'll, uh, and check uh, if he's uh, okay with everything. So, so good luck to all of you who participated. I really appreciate all the subscriptions, all the feedback that I've received. Uh, you know, it's it's very very nice to see. Uh, and uh, so I'll link the video uh, of the giveaway in the description. If you haven't participated yet, then please go ahead and do. Uh, it will be most likely announced tomorrow. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep clashing.